guys. How are you doing today? How are you doing? How are you? I love the name. Hey, you guys. Oh yeah, hey, definitely guys. Goonies inspired. Nice, <laughs> nice. I love yeah. it. <laughs> love it. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to start. Um, what drew you guys to, to developing this project and bringing to life this incredible book series? We've actually both been fans of these books since uh, mid two thousands when they first started getting published. We uh, have been friends for almost twenty years had worked together on our first show together, Kyle XY, and then I brought her as an actor into the Vampire Diaries universe in which she became a writer in the Vampire Diaries universe. And so uh, when somebody asked me after all those shows were done, hey, what what's the one show you've always wanted to make? And I said, you know, I've always wanted to see if I could take a crack at Vampire Academy. And I called her up and I said, do you want to do this with me? And she's like, more vampires? No. <laughs> No, I do not. And then I said, but it's set in like a palace royal Don't court forget. and there's palace intrigue. And she went, I'm sorry, wait, what? wait, I forgot about the royalty. <laughs> you got me with the royalty because I'm a yeah. little bit of a like, you know, Anglophile. Just yeah. a little. I can't help it. I mean, it's very fascinating. It's a little gossipy. It's a little political, the, all those stories that I read. So, yeah, I was, and I had forgotten actually how much I love the books because, as Julia said before, she, yeah. we, they came out before Vampire Diaries or you read them before Vampire mm -hmm. Diaries. And, and in rereading them all, I was like, oh my God, I loved these books. I didn't just read the first book. I realized I'd read all of the books. And so the political underpinning of uh, the, the series is great. And the political undertones are so uh, timely. So everything about it and having the option of shooting in Spain and there, you know, as you say, the third castle from the left, you have all this beautiful <laughs> choice of all these beautiful locations. And uh, yeah, so it was kind of a no brainer once we started kicking it around. Yeah. I had to say because I'm really enjoying the background of all these interviews and that that massive castle. And I mean, the palace this, is this great. was our production office setting. <laughs> we, we would were. stand in the window of our production office and look out, and a hundred yards across the way was right there. This view. So we've been living a good life. Spoiled. I can imagine that turns you somewhat into like a royalist yourself. You just wake up with like a glass of wine and just stare out at your. <laughs> well, oh yeah. <laughs> I happen to mention that our production office was on a vineyard, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and a monastery. So, you yes. know, a little fun, a little, little history. <laughs> history. Uh, amazing. And as you, as you mentioned this, I'm a big fan of the book series. There is just, there's so much as there's vampires, there's royalty, there's female friendships. How do you even begin to tackle such a hefty book series? You start with the friendship, 100%. Yes. Like that was our priority was get, get that right. Because if that doesn't work, then it doesn't matter. And it's nice the you know, get the romance right second. Because if the romance doesn't work, and at least you've got the female friendship, but you need, you know, you need to expand your world. Then it became about finding the right balance between the royal intrigue and the goings on at the royal court and the stuff that uh, originated, you know, it was an offshoot of Lissa and Rose's friendship and making sure that we never let one cannibalize the other. Um, there were a lot of things that we really needed to 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 remind ourselves to get right um because we didn't want to mess this one up this yeah. was this was important for fans of the book series to see that we can do it that it can be done yeah. uh, and we of course you know i'm not going to just take on any old vampire show uh after the last 15 years of my career yeah. so wanted to really make it feel different unique uh, like something that nobody's ever seen before. Yeah, and the books were unique, as you know, as fans yeah. of the books, like these were really unique books. She created, Rochelle Mead created a very unique, special, special world. And then it was just th the spin that we've taken on it. We sort of, you know, made it our own a little, but really the, there were all those guideposts in the book that were that really helped in terms of just starting for, mm -hmm. you know, just when you talk about it, it's a big world, but, we, but she gave us a lot to work with. Amazing. And um, as you said, you've worked on the vampire show before, but I always find vampires to be quite timeless. And um, why do you think we keep coming back to them in our shows, in our in our films, in our literature? I, I think they're just the existence of vampires as a creature in lore. It's really rooted in such a universally accessible um, mythology uh, themes. I mean, for me personally, I always think, well, a vampire is an immortal being, but what's the point of immortality if you're going to go through that life alone? So for me, I always want to read and or write the vampire love story, because if you don't have your person or your squad or your family or whatever to get you through this like unending time, then why do you want to be a vampire at all? What about you? What, 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 why the genre? Um, Other than that, I keep distracting you. <laughs> Be, be, 
because Julie Flack, <laughs> I think might be my answer. No, actually, it's so funny. I will just say the first day of the originals room, Mike Narducci, who was, who mm. was the me of that show with you, um, was a wonderful guy. He said, how many of in this writer's room would want to be vampires? And literally more than half were like, I'd like to be vampires. And I realized, no, I would never want to be a vampire. But I, what I loved about it is what's how do you make immortality? And in some ways, we, we don't know what our lifespan will be. It, we're as immortal as anything else. How do you make it count? What do you make it do? Mm -hmm. I think it makes you want to be more alive in your aliveness. And so it makes you want to make every day count in a certain kind of a way. And so that, I think that appeals to me. I think there's, there's a, this aliveness as I know they're dead beings. It's so crazy, yeah. but they're more, they're more in the moment than, than your average bear. And I, I find that really appealing. Yellow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> such, <laughs> such an amazing answer. What a way to start, uh, start to finish the interview. Thank you guys so much. You Thank you. Care. Good luck with the show. Take Cheers. care. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!